Our Old Testament reading from, for this evening is Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us, that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Then the land will yield its harvest, and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth will fear him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament reading is from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 12 through 24. Now we ask you, brothers, to respect those who work hard among you, who are over you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle. Encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not put out the Spirit's fire. Do not treat prophecies with contempt. Test everything. Hold on to the good. Avoid every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel reading for this evening is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Good evening. It has been a weird year. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I know that's not our style necessarily, but it seems kind of like an emphatic point that we just need to remind ourselves things are not the way we're used to, and things are just a little wonky right now. Who would have thought, for example, that the World Series would be played here in Arlington this year with no Rangers, right? I mean, or who would have thought that the Cowboys still have a chance at the playoffs and they're three and seven? These things are not as they are supposed to be. But on a slightly more serious note, slightly, who would have thought that our toilet paper purchasing behavior would change so dramatically? <laughs> How about when you visit the doctor and you stay in your car until they text you and say it's time to come in and then you don't have that waiting room thing you just go right back to the exam room or if you want to go visit a loved one and they happen to be in an assisted living or a nursing facility and you have to sit on the other side of the window outside and talk over your phone and wave it's a weird world we're living in it's affected the way we participate in church it's affected pretty much everything we do. 
It used to be that before I went to the store, I'd check to make sure I had my wallet. Now it's, I check to make sure I have my mask. You understand what I'm talking about. It hasn't just changed our behaviors, but it's actually changed our feelings. It's been a highly anxious year for many of us. People with thoughts like, I wonder if my grandkids are actually going to learn anything with their parents trying to teach them. (laughs) I wonder if my business is going to make it. I wonder if my retirement accounts are going to be massively affected by the pandemic. I wonder if I'm going to have a job. Will my family be healthy? Will I be able to share a Thanksgiving table with anybody, or is everybody going to bail? It's a time of loneliness for many. Isolation and mental well-being have been affected. It's a weird year. Not only has it been weird and anxious, it's been contentious. Because I believe part of what's going on is there's this built-up anxiety in our culture And it's coming out in wonky ways. And people are seeing a greater rift and a divide between political parties and anxiety about will will there be a smooth transition and people talking about riots and all kinds of things. Violence. Social media logarithms try and put us into little groups that we get like-minded people and then what happens is It becomes a feeding frenzy on somebody who has a different mindset. And there is greater tension than ever in our culture. It leads many to want to hunker down and become kind of like preppers and store up the ammo and store up the water and store up the food because the bad guys are coming, right? You know what I'm talking about? It's a weird time. And so I bring you a message tonight. Happy holidays. (laughs) And I mean it. Because this is the gateway. Thanksgiving is the gateway to a season of very holy days. Holy days. Thanksgiving is a day of giving thanks to God who has given us oh so much. You know, it's not that different than things that were going on 3,000 years ago when that psalm that Martin read just a moment ago was read. We don't know the exact circumstances of Psalm 67. The psalmist doesn't give us a ton of clues. But what we do know about Israel during that period is that it was a perilous time to be alive. They were constantly being raided by the foreign countries who wanted to come and take their land and take their wives and take their stuff and take their stock animals. And they didn't leave a lot behind. Think Old West and scalps on the plains. That's kind of what they were living in. That's the type of place it was. People with funny sounding names like Philistines and Ammonites and Jebusites and Amalekites and Edomites, and they were all coming to get you. And yet, the psalmist has one key word that he repeats over and over and over, six different times in that reading. And the word was may. He says this, he says, May God be gracious to us and bless us. May the people praise you. May all the peoples praise you. May all of the nations be glad. May the people praise you. May all the people praise you. You know what he's saying? He's talking to God in the midst of perilous circumstances. He's crying out saying, God, make yourself known to these people. And he has has a couple of key phrases in there. He says, make known to them your salvation. Now, when a person 3,000 years ago was thinking about God's salvation, there were some pretty deeply embedded images in that. And I just want you to think back to that for a second. What were some of the things that the people of Israel had experienced? If somebody said to you, make known the ways of God's salvation, they would have thought, all right, coming up out of Egypt, ripping open the Red Sea. And then we're wandering around in the desert for 40 years, and God provides water from a rock. He provides manna every day. He provides meat 
quail. He keeps their shoes from wearing out. These are miraculous, supernatural ways that God showed up and brought his salvation in perilous, crazy, contentious times. And even after that, they walk into the land of promised, uh, the land of milk and honey, and the Jordan River splits open, and God leads his people through, showing to them his salvation. And I believe that's what God is going to be doing with us as well in this time. Because see, when the things are more perilous, people actually pray. <laughs> you know what it drives you to do when things are a little bit wonky? Pray. And that's when God shows up. And so I'm thankful to each of you for being here tonight and being online with us because God is calling us to cry out like the ancient Israelites in that song, may you, God, Come and reveal to, your, reveal to all the nations how great you are. You are a saving God. You've got this. We try and want to figure it all out on ourselves, in our own minds, but you don't necessarily allow that. You've got a better plan. That better plan, as we fast forward from 3,000 years ago to just 2,000 years ago, came in this time that we call Coming up here, Advent, the coming, the revelation of the Son of God. We celebrate it the high and holy day of, of Christmas. And it's God's plan of salvation once again being revealed. Kind of a crazy way. Baby born in a manger, poor. Not the king of the universe. Yes, the king of the universe in such a humble way coming among us. He comes and he heals and he teaches and he dies, but he rises. And that's the salvation. In the dying and the rising. So yes, we can say happy, holy days. Because there's something bigger than what we see going on here. There's something bigger than COVID. There's something bigger than political unrest. There's something bigger. His name is Jesus. And God is constantly drawing us to focus back on him. You know, the people at Thessalonica that Martin read about, chapter 5, he, Paul gives some very specific words. He says, be joyful always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. You know what was going on with the people at Thessalonica? Persecution. The church started in kind of a distressed way we read about it back in acts chapter 17 it says this when they had passed through apollina and they came to thessalonica there was a Jew jewish synagogue there and as was his custom paul went into that synagogue and on three sabbath days he reasoned with them from the scriptures explaining who jesus was and that he had to rise from the dead this jesus i am proclaiming to you he is the Christ, Paul said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined with Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few prominent women. But the Jews there were jealous. So they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace and they formed a mob and they started a riot in the city and then they rushed to Jason's house to snatch Paul and Silas in order to bring them out in the crowd but when they did not find them there, they took out Jason and some other brothers and they drug them before the city officials. And they said, these men are causing trouble over here. They are saying that, C they are defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials threw the, went into turmoil and they threw them into jail. That's how the church started. Riots. Craziness, distress. And Paul's writing to that group of people saying, take a breath, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in every circumstance. When there's riots in the streets, when you got to wear a goofy mask, <laughs> when you can't necessarily be with all the people that you want to be with on Thanksgiving, 
Be joyful. Give thanks in all circumstances. Pray continually. It's an interesting thing how these themes continue to come back around, isn't it? 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago. I'm sure we can find lots of other spots along in the line of history, but what about today? I think God's saying a couple of the same things to us today. Be joyful. Pray continually. Give thanks, even when you might feel like you're under persecution. Give thanks in all circumstances. I'm a, kind of a closet Chicago Cubs baseball fan. I grew up, sorry for some of you who don't, can't appreciate that. Um, but I grew up in, in Denver, and we didn't have a pro baseball team at the time, but we did have WGN on the just early days of cable TV. And so I watched a lot of Chicago Cubs baseball and Harry Carey and all of that stuff. And I realized that the lonesome losers of the world were the Chicago Cubs. And so I was always kind of secretly rooting for them. And 108 years after their last baseball championship, 2016 came around. And I don't know, some of you may remember 2016, the Cubs won the World Series. They were down 3-1 to one in the series. There was a, like no hope. Nobody ever comes back down 3-1. to one. They were down in the last game. They had tied the series at 3-3, three to three, and they came through with a hit at the very end. They won 8-7, to seven, and the town went crazy. And I had this little sports tear in my eye. Maybe some of you can relate to some of that, right? where your team finally makes the breakthrough and th good things start to happen for this forlorn franchise. And I thought of that today when I was thinking of how Paul was saying to the people at Thessalonica, you know what he's saying? He's go he goes into this whole thing about this, the return of Jesus. And what he's saying is, your team is going to win in the end. It's way better than you think it's going to be. You think you're going through some hard stuff now? It, it's nothing compared to the glory that's going to be revealed to you when Jesus returns. That's what, that's what he's anchoring this hope on. He said the resurrection is real, and you guys anchor in that, and you're going to be fine. But if you start looking around at the world and getting all frazzled and freaked, you're not going to be fine. You're going to be like somebody who built their foundation on sand question is this, is the God who could heal lepers, the God who could rip apart the Red Sea, the God who could part the Jordan River, the God who could start a church amidst a riot, is that God still with us? Is that God's promise still true? Is he really for us? Is he really coming back for his church? I can tell you this, the answer is yes. We don't know when, but we, we can do those things that Paul says, be joyous, pray continually, and give thanks in every circumstance because we have that ultimate reality. We know who wins the World Series. We know. It hadn't happened just yet, but we know that day is coming. One of the things that um, in the psalm, it talked about in, in Psalm 67 was the fact that uh, when people, in verse 5, I believe it is, yeah, verse 4, I'm sorry, it says this, may the nations be glad and sing for joy. This is a prayer. The psalmist is praying that all the nations, everybody on the whole planet, would be glad at the salvation of our God and that they would sing just crazy sing, like people dancing in the streets kind of singing, that they would give exuberant praise to the God who brings salvation. You know, I saw that on the World Series in 2016, people dancing joyously, jubilantly, unashamedly, crazy. I don't see that in the church. Now, I'm not asking you to do that. I'm really not. Some of you, that might be in your personality more, and others, maybe not as much, but it's okay. The issue is really what's underneath that. 
we know the victor. And that kind of wells something up in us. It's like a little sports tear, but it's actually way more than that. It's a real tear of joy. King Jesus is coming for me. Coming for me. My hope and my prayer is as we kind of continue to survive a season of weirdness, is that we will do just what Paul encouraged the people at Thessalonica to do. Pray continuously. Pray. Be joyful. We know the outcome. Don't let the circumstances beat you down. We know the outcome. Be like the leper who actually came back and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because he's making this whole ball of earth continue to spin, right? And a lot of times we just forget to come back and say, thank you for this breath that I have today, this food that you've provided today, this love that you've provided, these relationships you've provided, this meaningful work you've provided. Thank you, God. There is good news. The good news is the king is coming and that we will experience his full and complete restoration. May all the nations praise him. May our healing come from anchoring in the hope that is certain and may he bring a harvest in this season. I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the harvest and your promise that better days are coming. We long for that, Lord. We long for the day that you'll bring us all back to be with you. And Lord, until then, don't let it help us not to just focus on circumstances, but to see the bigger picture, the glory that is coming. May all nations through us be encouraged. We ask that you'd continue to call us with your missional calling, that as we go and make disciples of all nations, that you would teach us everything we need to know in order that people would come to know you personally and ultimately forever. We promise that you would be with us always, even to the end of the age. We thank you. We thank you for these holy days that are approaching. In your name we pray. Amen.